very warm welcome to the viewers uh, we are back with the new edition of unbiased the second edition and um, yeah again we have our beloved expert uh, saravanan ganesan is here um, we are today we would like to discuss a, a very special topic we have just celebrated last month uh, the independence day of india and so now india is marching towards 75th year after independence and uh, you would like to um, discuss and also analyze and get the expert opinion from saravanan on how he is seeing the status quo of uh, growth and development um, and various factors uh, of indian democracy and uh, also what when it all started when young india was born how it was and uh, how far we have traveled now with various challenges that uh, an young nation had to encounter within from also from outside and uh, what from his analysis what would be let's say in the next 50 years how he would like to see in india and uh, what are the challenges lies ahead to realizing uh, that india that he wish to see so these are the points uh, today we thought we will take up for the discussion saravanan always a very pleasure to uh, discuss and interact with you um, because uh, it, it's something uh, we do it very casually but uh, with lot of uh, let's say um, seriousness in our discussions because the, at the end of the day it is important for us to uh, bring to the viewers um, what is the end goal of this uh, episodes is to make sure there are certain things that to be broken down um for simply because not everybody are expert so it should be also possible for common women and men to also understand and uh, connect with about the topics what we are discussing so um it will be nice uh, to start with um if you can just speak on your own um idea of india and because uh, like uh, you me and many others we all had our uh, till our youth let's say um, education we had in india you know uh, so we know what the india we grew up and uh, we are now almost two decades after that we are here so of course we are always in touch with our roots we are involved in many things but at the same time from your perspective of many factors let it be governance let it be health system let it be infrastructure or let it be uh, women education women empowerment many many things one can look at it so to start with uh, kindly give us how you are seeing and what is the status quo um, as of now yeah floor is yours arunan please yeah thank you thank you bala it is always a pleasure to discuss um, current affairs and contemporary indian politics as well as international politics with you um of course uh, you be uh, you be uh, you been a member of uh, city council and uh, know and know the governance system here in germany um we had always a fruitful discussion on this governance and um, development strategies of uh, india and germany as well so it's always a pleasure to have uh, discuss with you about these things um, uh, yeah, as you said uh, we we grown up till our youth uh, i would say 25 26 years we grown up in uh, india and we know the system of india and how the country evolved um, uh, like from its independence in 1947 till date so there is a huge difference if you see the um, uh, 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 independence year of independence 1947 um, where we see um, uh, kind of uh, british they left india in a manner that our gdp was um, really 2.4 or something to the to the world uh, towards the world economic growth and um, of course we had a huge uh, refugee problem i mean the partition between india and pakistan where there were um, uh, even the un was at, uh, un also was also at a nascent stage of development we don't we didn't, uh, we didn't have a kind of a un refugee commission or even uh, the un refugee convention was enacted in 1952 so um, there was no high commissioner for refugee uh, um, management or something like that or international organization of management around that period so the country alone itself managed uh, to come out of the refugee crisis during the partition period 
and of course um, if you see germany um, after the second world war uh, german got a marshall plan to come uh, to uh, for its economic revival but, uh, but india um, with its uh, economic resources it has to it had to come on its own to uh, to move as a country independent country an independent republic so uh, these are all the things um, uh, which uh, was disadvantage at the beginning of indian independence but um, uh, at the same time um, there was a huge uh, discussion of going around that period like whether india would be will be intact like this as a, as one country because of its diverse nature uh, diverse cultures presence of diverse cultures and languages uh, would make it brittle to uh, um, to break into different countries uh, but uh, um, our unique our uh, the country's uniqueness is uh, its diversity i would say and its strength also lies in its diversity so this diversity was well tackled by those um, uh, by the administration around the period of independence and the well um, and the idea of uh, uh, segregating language based states that was also kind of uh, uh, grouping um, identical culture and languages into a group uh, into a state uh, categorizing them into a state was a kind of um, a federal create a kind of a federal structure no? so that was uh, uh, that was the basic foundation for our robust democracy i would say uh, identify identical cultures together to groom and nurture together and to provide the strength uh, to strengthen the um, indian diversity and the indian democracy so um, but our country has a uh, you know federal structure it could it could have been it could have a, it could have had a confederate confederation structure also like the us um, each and every state has its own constitution and and together form a kind of a federal structure to form a country like us but uh, we evolved in a different unique um, manner to form a uh, to form a kind of federal structure and uh, saranan uh, yes uh, very nice point you made i just want to intervene on that part um, mm. as you said um, after the independence uh, though india was one uh, let's leave that part of the partition but in other than that india was one was the feeling um, within india uh, that it was uh, it is a one country um, or because um, we know that um, many let's say presidencies and you know those were all put together and then it was done and of course sardar vallabhbhai patel played an important role and everything now india uh, and the india at that point of time when india was born still were there undercurrents within various states and provinces that still they were not very happy the way it was or already after the independence it was already mahatma gandhi and led the freedom struggle made sure that that one indianness was already strong see uh, uh, yeah the, it's a good question actually if you see um, the different phases of uh, uh, mahatma gandhi's uh, um, uh, non violence struggle against the british rule uh, the non uh, the disobedience movement or um, uh, uh, or the quit india movement uh, whatever you name you name it um, it brought together the country i mean the country was together to uh, to protest against the colonial rule so um, actually i would say mahatma gandhi's uh, freedom struggle the idea the very idea of uh, uniting the nation started from the uh, pre british uh, from the colonial period itself i would say um, if you see the quit india movement uh, which started in 1942 um, the whole country um, or a non cooperation movement a civil disobedience movement whatever you movement you may you know i mean uh, the whole country gathered together he traveled extensively all over india to um, to gather support for his uh, non violent struggle against the, against the colonial power so that was the basic foundation for our uh, unity now i would say and this tendency has not like uh, this was not disrupted um by the uh, new government uh, even though it was weak and uh, uh, the governance system was full not fully equipped um with uh, bureaucrats or uh, professionals um, it was a weak government with weak resources uh, they they um, tried to uh, put it uh, put it uh, like alive 
the integration process of India. Of course, uh, as you said, uh, there were a lot of provinces, princely states uh, around that period who want to be in, who wanted to be independent um, for many reasons, um, whatever you mean. Uh, but um, uh, but these country, uh, these provinces or princely uh, states are uh, they wanted to be independent. Some of them they wanted to join Indian Union. So uh, uh, it was the pol politicians and um, uh, a well. Um, organized bureaucracy which decided okay uh, we have to negotiate with them we have to unite them we have to integrate them into um, uh, Indian Union uh, for example Nizam of Hyderabad um, he wanted to join they were given options of course and uh, they, uh, Nizam of Hyderabad um, they, he wanted to join uh, Pakistan but um, you know the geographical proximity uh, between India and Pakistan it was not feasible though it was not feasible uh, some of the rulers they wanted to join Pakistan around that time but um, but it was uh, um, Sorry. Uh, it was negotiated by the government and um, in some cases use of force was, uh, was also done but um, at the end um, uh, it was um, consolidated by the language based states i would say the integration process so uh, now what you see um, in the southern states especially karnataka maharashtra uh, maharashtra uh, is partly north and partly south but maharashtra i would say uh, and um, uh, kerala Andhra and Tamil Nadu. So they, they have been like um, segregated as a language based state with a common identity and language. So that was also a, a foundation to, uh, to the uh, to kind of a unity to the country. Right. Thank you. How do you see current India, where we are, or how, how far we have? traveled in spite of many challenges and i would be very happy if you can enumerate few challenges which was very crore um, at the start and then in the last let's say out 70 more years and how we have overcome and what is the current how you see current india yeah uh, actually uh, indian democracy uh, i would say it's a unique democracy we have seen a, a single party ruling for many years congress and uh, we had an emergency also we have seen uh, the country has seen uh, an emergency uh, curbing fundamental rights of uh, uh, citizens of india and we have a constitutionalism yes. um, propounded by rm lipiad no? kind of uh, um, uh, representatives from uh, yeah, all over the regions from india who ruled the country uh, in the national front government in the 1990s uh, Mm, uh, that was also a, a phenomenon uh, of our Indian evolving Indian democracy, and then uh, the 1991 um, economic reforms, neoliberal reforms of in, economic reforms of India, and then now um, the nationalist government. Uh, so we have a kind of a evolutionary uh, evolutionary democracy. It's a phenomenon uh, which gradually evolved. Uh, from a low level to a kind of a robust democracy, I would say. Now we have a, a checks and balances, um, which was uh, um, proposed uh, in, uh, um, in the constitutional uh, committee of making constitution. Um, uh, we have a, uh, the checks and balances are now in place. So. Um, uh, it's not a kind of um, army which has gain, which will gain um, power over the democratic government, a democratically elected government or the parliament as more say than the Supreme Court of India. So it uh, all we have the checks and balances in place. So uh, you cannot just tilt the democracy to form into another form of a kind of uh, I would say dictatorship or nor army rule. It is not possible in India now, even though. Many scholars would be against uh, against that argument. I would say um, the, uh, uh, the power emanates still from the people, from the lowest level of the democracy. I would say in the village, in the rural side of the uh, uh, democracy, because we have this panchayat raj, which has mm -hmm. solidified the uh, local self government governments, uh, the small panchayats uh, were uh, clearly built. Um, and these are all the basics of our Indian democracy. So if you compare uh, the 20th, in 20th century India and the 21st century India, of course, um, um, we have lagging, we are lagging 
clearly lagging behind in some aspects and we are of course um, moving ahead in many aspects like uh, the science and technology if you see um, uh, our uh, space technology space research uh, it's evolving i mean and then in technical studies also you have a lot of uh, thousands of um, technical colleges engineering colleges or medical facilities or whatever you name but uh, the thing is um, india is evolving in a positive direction but there are also hurdles in that thing uh, for example um, india is now uh, part of this uh, uh, sustainable development goals we were the part, we were a part of a millennium development goals uh, from 2000 to 2015 and now sustain uh, sustainable development goals from 2015 to 2030 so we have uh, selected some 17 goals to reach uh, so uh, eradication of poverty eradication of hunger food security um, providing health sector in, improving the health sector in infrastructure and um, uh, education gender equality so a lot of uh, there are 17 topics which india has chosen and working on that but the problem with our country is huge population and it needs resources some 3.9 trillion euro uh, dollars us dollars is required to put, uh, to propound this uh, millennium uh, sustainable development goals annually so uh, India has only one. Uh, India is investing only 1.4 trillion US dollars. Uh, so there is a gap of uh, 2.5 uh, trillion US dollars uh, to enhance this uh, uh, sustainable development goals. So that is a huge uh, task or a huge challenge, I would say, for the uh, for the country to mobilize these investments and to um, uh, work on work on achieving the target set in 2030. So that is a huge challenge, I would say, and um, our constitution, it has um, evolved, um, I mean, uh, in a positive direction. Our constitution is one of the flexible, most flexible, I would say, um, which can be changed, which can be amended um, according to the modern period like uh, if it's not rigid like the US constitution or a German constitution, which is very difficult to amend or uh, um, uh, which is very to amend but uh, Indian constitution it, show, it witnessed many amendments uh, according to the need of the people and according to the contemporary period so uh, the, this flexibility itself uh, um, uh, it's an advantage for us uh, to amend the constitution as per the given time and the need of the people so in the constitutional sense we are also evolving and the election system has also gradually developed uh, that is free and fair elections um, that which is a basic necessity of a democratic system, um, which ensures the lega legality of the elected government. So the free and fair elections are guaranteed uh, through, a, uh, through an elect independent election commission and uh, through a lot of measures like uh, voter issuing of uh, voters' identity cards and uh, um, checks and balances in the um, electoral, electoral system itself uh, uh, guarantees a free and fair elections um, elections, uh, what uh, in state government elections or in the state assembly elections or in the Indian parliamentary elections. So that is a, a basic, uh, basic, uh, I would say, uh, need need to have a kind of legitimate government. So that is once it, once that way is cleared. I mean, you if once you get the legitimacy, then you have you are you are empowered to adopt development for the society, sustainable development uh, for the society. So the government is working in that area, but as I said, we need huge, uh, there is a huge gap of uh, funds which is required, as well as you have to keep the, um, uh, unemplo uh, the unemployment rate very low because we have a young, a young generation of people um, who need who need employment because uh, we cannot keep them idle or put them in uh, risk of uh, uh, um, going to poverty, uh, power, going to poverty. So we need to keep them engaged and for that we need to have a kind of economic growth which can uh, minimize the unemployment rate and um, uh, give impetus to the economic growth. That is also a huge task nowadays. Right, right. I think um, you touched upon uh the nerve of the whole thing. That means, if I observe you correctly, you said there are a few things which uh, there are no parallels, I would say, in the world, uh, which we are very, we can be very, very uh, proud <clears throat> as like a very young country to have developed those systems. For example, you said extensively about the Panchayat Raj, um, the powers that is uh, decentralized 
to the villages and village governing bodies and self help groups for women and everything that is extremely good and uh, not said um, india was one of the earliest countries i would say um, who elected the indian prime minister uh, some women and we had one of the earliest where the president was also women mm-hmm. and uh, we also have the voting rights when many of the western world still took many years to give voting rights for women we were at the forefront again and the constitution as you said is flexible but it's one of very very detailed constitution um, taking into account by the visionary who drafted the committee and the people who drafted it had such a vision that they uh, foresee what problems could come to this young nation and that's why they kept it very flexible so that it can be adapted as one progresses um, of course you also said about the very strong judiciary uh, very strong uh, parliament and also the president office and also um, the um, election uh, uh, commission office i think uh, these are very very strong everybody knew that that is very um, impartial and it is absolutely the central pillar of uh, such a big country and a huge population and managing uh, with all the challenges uh, peace and unity what are that amazing things that india um, had developed for itself which the world has been seeing in india but at the same time india has made sure that these developments also created jobs um, out of poverty line um, providing primary health care education all those things achieving these so called sdgs as you said what are those crucial developments that happened either it could be from within the government or it could be by private sector or it could be by ngos whatever it could be what are those amazing things for yourself that something you have would have never thought of in such a short time india could come to that level uh well if you see the uh, <coughs> we have a, a kind of a two sets of rights um, civil and political rights and then uh, social economic cultural uh, rights so um Uh, if you see the social economic cultural rights aspect uh, of uh, um, india india has achieved a um, lot in the education field which is very amazing for a country uh, like a country like india with huge population so uh, um, i will come to the poverty eradication next and first, before that we will talk about this um, right uh, education right to education um this has been implemented uh, by the successive governments um, whatever the party they belong to but uh, this uh, goal of uh, um, achieving higher ed- education rate in india especially you have kerala and the south india which has attained uh, um, 100% of primary education very early uh, in the 80s or in the 90s itself uh, when when we were young and going to school so um, um uh, it's a huge um, achievement for the country for a country like india which is spending huge on the defense uh, and as well as huge on the population itself in development infrastructure development projects so uh, the uh, the first and foremost achievement which i would like to mention is the education and the science, in, in, uh, uh, progress in science and technology so um it grew, it grew side by side uh, the education system uh, supported by a kind of a development of infrastructure like um, universities and colleges we have iits we have iims which are world class uh, anna university uh, one of the best universities in south asia so um this kind of uh, um, educational institutions uh, which have also supported the growth of education of uh, indian uh, students and then of course we have one of the most robust um, uh, it technicians uh, uh, from uh, in india who are going all over the world to uh, work in different uh, different fields or different um, countries so uh, that is the first and almost success in the um, education department education and then if you see in health sector health sector though um, there are some um, kind of uh, negative points in health sector today we have a good 
health system in place um, comparing to other developed countries or developed uh, even in some developed countries they don't have that kind of uh, affordable medical system affordable health system um, of course we have a kind of private sectors also which are which can be uh, afford which can be afforded by only uh, those people who have got money but uh, we have a kind of affordable um, health system in india this is evident uh, from the fact that you can see uh, many countries from our neighboring countries, many people from neighboring countries, they come to India to have a kind of a, um, a, um, medical tourism to, for treatment to India. So uh, the health system has also evolved um, very much, I would say, in this period. And uh, most important is gender equality. So uh, gender equality, even though we haven't achieved 33 percentage for uh, women in parliament, um, as you said, uh, we had uh, we had the first uh, prime minister of India, a uh, prime minister, first in, uh, female prime minister and female president, and um, after that, uh, the women have uh, excelled in many fields. In all, uh, almost uh, there were uh, no field that uh, women haven't done anything or uh, set their foot. Set a food. So um, uh, the gender equality, which is very crucial for our uh, society, uh, for our society also, because uh, we were from, uh, we we emerged from a system uh, with lots of caste and communal um, uh, communal diversity. So, so uh, this this gender equality this uh, has played a very crucial role uh, in keeping the society intact you know uh, what um, uh, especially women uh, girls mm -hmm. education uh, in states like Tamil Nadu uh, there were female uh, chief ministers uh, and they uh, they have also propounded for the um, girls education and they have also implemented many projects and the schemes for the upliftment of women and uh, that ensure uh, gender equality so uh, uh, now, uh, if you see in India in the 20th century and in the 21st century, I would say uh, the gender equality has come a long way, um, which is an exemplary, uh, which is an example, which can set an example for other countries also. So, uh, though we have to go a long way uh, to have a kind of uh, um, equal salary for uh, equal pay for women and uh, equal rights for women, and uh, so, uh, to achieve those things, we have to, of course, we have to move a long way. But um, the gender equality has also been achieved, I would say. So these three sectors are education, health, and uh, the gender equality, which I would say uh, has evolved um, very much. And it was, uh, uh, it was kind of a crucial factor for the growth of India too. Right. Let's come to your, uh, let's say, favorite subject, and you all love to um, political governance. So, um, when you look back from the time India was, and let's say from when kings ruled, and then we got, uh, we went into colonial uh, rule, and then we got independence, and now we have come a long way where single party is having two third majority after a long time in between one party rule, and then came back. And then we had uh, very tall leaders in the states. Uh, just you explained, uh, great uh, uh, programs was done for the social upliftment, no doubt about it. And uh, so, how do you see the whole political spectrum and uh, the development? And where do you see the challenges at the same time, but the positive way of political development and political governance? But at the same time, where do you have worry? Where do you see probably? you have certain worries whether this could spiral into things which might cause trouble in the long run. Well, um, uh, if you go back in, um, from the beginning of independence itself, uh, from the Nehruvian era itself, uh, um, there was a kind of argument between North and South, the discussion, the debate, like uh, Northern people, uh, North Indian people, they are dom dominating the politics and South Indian people, we are like uh, disadvantaged because of this. This argument, uh, even uh, some last year ago, there was also kind of a, a United States of South India or something like that, that, uh, on, that debate went on. But um, wh uh, what I want to say is like uh, each and everyone knows uh, 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 unity, is, unity is our strength. So if you want to be a part, 
then it will be disadvantage for each and every one so uh, that is the motivational force i would say uh, behind the unity um, uh, even though you can uh, have a kind of favorable arguments in uh, that can disintegrate uh, that can favor the disintegration of country uh, but only one argument i would say uh, would favor is like uh, if you stand together then you will be pro you will pro you will be profit you will get profit otherwise you will be perished so uh, so that is the motivational thing uh, and that thing that's why that's why um, whenever whenever there was a debate uh, it was like um, it moved away from this thing so we had a south indian prime minister also uh, yeah. we had a punjabi prime minister also so this is and uh, the democracy this evolving democracy the evolving nature of our democracy itself is an example that all peoples are given equal opportunity like uh, as i said the national front government you have seen uh, dmk government dmk party was also there and uh, lalu prasad's party was also there so it was a kind of a group uh, uh, um, a group of uh, uh, regional representatives uh, who ruled that country around that time so they discussed always discussed together and uh, they took decisions on that basis uh, so uh, india would like to have a kind of healthy democracy like that um, uh, which i would say because instead of uh, relying on a single party or a single leader uh, it would be always in the good uh, in the uh, good will of the country to have a kind of federal structure which where we have a representatives from all over the region who can contribute towards the, the growth of the country and the development of the country so uh, i always favor kind of a consortium consortialism which favors um, which has a uh, representation from all the regions uh, um, so that people have pe people are ensured that their voices also have um, and the government also moving in a good direction i mean in a, towards a direction of growth so um, this is my opinion I, of course but um, uh, as you said uh, that majority two third majority is also a, a kind of a, a good sign for a democracy if you want to if you uh, argue in that way uh, say like a reform reforms so some uh, it is easy to have a kind of uh, constitutional reforms and constitutional amendments uh, in the parliament uh, if you have a two third majority but at the same time a uh, concentration of power is also not good for a kind of for a democratic country so if you have a kind of concentration of powers with a single party um, with absolute majority then it will uh, it will tilt the democracy towards the favor of uh, that strong party or the strong idealism so uh, right. there, is a, there is a danger in that too okay fine one thing i think we both would agree is that um, india would never irrespective of whether it is two third or we have very tall leader powerful leader india would never go into the kind of dictatorship we see in other places no, because so, yeah. uh, because we have uh, counterbalance mechanisms like uh, we have very clearly um, a presidential office and we have the government union government and also we have the judiciary and the electoral commission which are all independent bodies which are very strong of course the appointment is made by the parliament and things like that though but still once they are done they are very independent so each and every uh, institution checks on its own and gain checks and everything so i think that is clear but one thing before we move on do you ever see because we both are here in germany a beautiful model here is at least i see that way that when you go into election you have parties contesting opposite to each other but once the election is over the parties which is having completely opposite not completely it's more and more now you see more more or less they are all having kind of same thing in a different way let's put it that way so they come together you know for example as of now the cdu spd you know yeah, they are both yeah. opposite they come together they form a government do you see something like or let's say there are advantages of these things obviously have a stability of the government but on the same side do you see something like this would happen in india ever like say the bjp or the congress or the left or the others somehow after the election they say we don't have the numbers but still let's two big fractions can come together and let's make a government do you see or the ideology is completely different that it doesn't it will not work in the indian context 
Well, uh, this is a very tough question <laughs> because, uh, you know, uh, 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 like from our state itself, if you see that thing, yeah, sure. uh, would you ever uh, men, uh, think about a coalition between DMK and ADMK? I mean, <laughs> it's very difficult to, uh, because uh, uh, the Indian political system is evolved like that, like, uh, 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 like okay, we have a different ideology than yours, then uh, it cannot come together. Uh, but there is also a say uh, in politics, uh, there, is, uh, there is no permanent enemy or a permanent friend. But um, we have seen some examples. The recent example being uh, Shiv Sena government being uh, supported by NCP and Congress. Uh, if you see that uh, some 20, 20 years ago when Val Thakre was there, uh, can you imagine this kind of uh, support uh, of a Congress for uh, Shiv Sena? No. So uh, we have that. And even uh, Congress uh, supported uh, Chandrasekhar government in the 1990s if you remember uh, of course uh, they walked out after uh, after that and um, there was a new fresh elections announced but uh, still congress supported chandrasekhar's government even though it was a majority and it was against their ideology um, so there were examples uh, um, of that um, case like in Germany, like CD1, SPD, or uh, even CDU with the uh, Greens uh, coalition. Uh, uh, but uh, what I what I observed all these years is uh, um, uh, like uh, this ideological uh, difference that is rooted till grassroots level. I mean, till to the grassroots level, it, this ideological difference you can see. Like uh, um, you have, you might have uh, seen many clashes between the party workers uh, in, in rural areas or in urban areas. Hey, he has torn my leader's uh, poster, or he has uh, uh, um, removed my uh, leader's cutout, or something like that. So uh, that ideological difference uh, you can see till the grassroots level, and it is very difficult um, uh, to convince uh, the leaders to come together. Uh, to work for the development of the nation because uh, each and every party has its own um, agenda of uh, um, uh, development in that state, for, to say, for example. Uh, um, so they don't want to collide with those things. And there is also, of course, um, a kind of fear among the politicians. If I come together with that party, if I call, if I have a coalition with that, with that party, they will take the credit of the development, for example. Uh, uh, we we will both together uh, do uh, uh, plan a scheme and if it goes success he will take the credit or I will be side sided out because he will take the credit or something like that so uh, there is a kind of ego uh, issues also there and of course our patriarchal nature of uh, the society um, uh, it doesn't allow. A kind of anthropological research should be undertaken on this. Uh, why uh, these ideologies cannot come together? Even if you care, if you see the Marxist communist or the Marxist Leninist or the uh, groups, they don't come together. CPI or CPIM, mm. they won't come together. So uh, this exists because uh, one reason might be it, it is um, till to the it is uh, up to the grassroots level, which hinders the leaders to come together or uh, the lack of communication, clear communication between the parties, uh, what they want to do, uh, I mean, the convey, uh, conveying their agendas uh, um, con and convincing the opposition party uh, that we are going to work for the development of the state or the country. Uh, so we have to do something, I mean, we have to come together. So I mean, I mean if you see the coalition governments, uh, coalition talks, I would say, in Germany, for example, um, in the last federal ele elections, so there was a huge um, talking going on between CDU, FDP, and Greens. No? Mm -hmm. It was uh, it was like a longer period of uh, negotiations, even going late nights too. But uh, at the end of the day, it was broken. I mean, uh, this FTP walked out. And if you see those things, we have a clear kind of agenda uh, and uh, um, not ready to compromise on their agenda. So uh, there you see the pol difference, political difference between the parties. So I won't do any, com I won't do any compromise with that. Uh, like uh, SPD government, uh, they, SPD party, they said no minimum wages. There should be a minimum wages. We don't want to compromise on that agenda. That is our party agenda. We want to do that. So, uh, so lack of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, lack of uniformity in um, in ideology 
and then you have a, a, a kind of a, a, not a refusal of, for a compromise in their agenda. That is also a kind of a, a reason uh, why those parties do not come together. Uh, can you imagine kind of uh, ADMK and uh, DMK uh, in the coalition party? Um, if you imagine and uh, imagine it in a way like uh, the German parties are doing uh, coalition negotiations, uh, whether uh, you can arrive at a decision of a coalition coalition between the two parties, you cannot because uh, non compromise. And then uh, non convince you cannot convince the other party cannot convince the uh, the other one uh, another one to uh, accept their agenda. So uh, it is in the basic level itself uh, the difference in ideology that uh, uh, that puts that prevents the other party to enter into a coalition. Right. Same. So um, yeah, uh, beautifully said. Um... Take a little light uh, part cinema so i think uh, even today we are all uh, laughing at memes by famous comedians i think this is a stress buster for many of them actually and uh, cinema how far because when i see recently also yesterday in the news uh, that actors you know uh, see individual actors are taking the government single handedly they uh, know about freedom of speech and many things are being said of course that itself i see a uh, great development in, in the country because we know around the world many countries if you say something like that you would be behind bars or whatever it is but here you know uh, there is uh, the whole way of looking at the media this way or that way how do you see the whole entertainment industry especially the cinema because cinema is also something like as much as a political leader is like a demigod uh, cinema is also something like that huge fan followings and uh, but they do influence a lot um, among the people and people's characters and also the way of life and many things, isn't it? Yeah. Bala, uh, entertainment uh, played, a, uh, played a significant role in our freedom, in the freedom struggle. So uh, if you see the freedom struggle movement itself, there are a lot of uh, artists, uh, um, uh, like folk artists, Terukut uh, artists, like uh, they played a huge role uh, in staging Terukut uh, um, in rural areas uh, to uh, inform the people about the atrocities created by the colonial powers, uh, and they uh, uh, they were a kind of uh, a catalyst to um, encourage the people to fight against the colonial power. So that was the concept of um, that was the concept of uh, our freedom uh, fighters or leaders uh, um, uh, to use that entertainment industry for uh, to fight against the uh, British people uh, through the enter entertainment channel. So uh, this play uh, this in a simplified form, they explain the rural people or the very low poor people uh, what are the effects of the colonial power and how why we want to get a freedom from those power colonial power so uh, this was a, a easy medium to reach out to people so uh, th this is the a crucial factor uh, to uh, i would say it's a crucial factor in the freedom struggle because uh, uh, our uh, most of the population they were living in the rural areas so it was very easy to reach out to them through these kind of folk arts so entertainment played a, a significant role um, in the freedom struggle so after the freedom struggle uh, what to do with that so it uh, of course uh, we had this um, uh, development of cinema in the beginning of 20th century uh, the enter entertainment industry uh, grow uh, grown up and the bombay taxi establishment of uh, bombay uh, takis and uh, from with the german uh, collaboration in bombay that was the basic foundation of a, a, a indian film industry so it gradually developed um, after the independence so uh, this uh, this um, uh, camp tema, I would say the main uh, objective has been taken up by the political parties. So, uh, if you want to reach out to people, if you want to communicate something to people, it can be uh, communicated through this kind of medium. I mean, the simplest medium would be the cinema. So, uh, you, uh, so you have seen a lot of theaters, uh, cinema theaters being built around that period in 70s. Uh, 60s, 70s, uh, with the growth of uh, cinema industry in South India as well as in North India, and um, especially in Maharashtra. So uh, uh, this uh, hero worship or uh, this um, kind of uh, 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 using cinema to come to power or to uh, to uh, uh, to put forth a political agenda was. Um, 
utilized by the um, Dravidian parties in Tamil Nadu first. It was a kind of a certain example in India. Um, if you see uh, ADMK leader M. G. Ramachandran or even DMK um, Kar uh, Karunanidhi or whatever the political leaders, they have adopted this medium. Uh, you have seen uh, Karunanidhi has written many scripts and screenplays and uh, playwrights. Uh, for many plays and for some movies too. So those movies are all uh, uh, like um, uh, agenda of, uh, like announcing the agenda of DMK parties. So, um, so for social justice and uh, all this kind of stuff there. And, uh, um, and the ADMK on the other side, they use this medium uh, to uh, show that uh, this, their party is like um, working for the upliftment of poor and to eradicate power, poverty in rural areas. So they utilize the medium, common medium uh, of uh, this entertainment industry to, in a simplified manner to convey their message and agenda to the rural area, to the poor people. So in that way, it started. It, it has started and it, it, huge, uh, it has a huge um, advantage for the, both the parties to uh, get their agendas uh, propagated in the uh, mass of people. But um, after seeing this examples, uh, the, current, uh, the current contemporary actors also, they are also dreaming about doing this thing. So if you if we have some kind of agenda in our film, then it will be a kind of a foundation for our political career. So using cinema as a, uh, a cinema career as a political foundation to come into power like uh, um, many actors. I would, uh, yeah. don't need to mention about the names, but uh, uh, the basic idea is to have uh, to have M.G. Ramachandran as a uh, role model uh, who was uh, first in the film industry and then after became chief minister, uh, pa uh, party functionary in DMK party and then after that he became chief, uh, chief minister of Tamil Nadu. So uh, this is an example for the, for the young generation. Okay, uh, this is the medium which I have to convey my uh, news or convey my uh, motivation, convey my um, intention to the people. Uh, I want to serve for the people. So this, uh, this uh, I have selected this medium to reach out to you, to uh, convey you my message. And I, subsequently, I will become, uh, I want to become a leader to serve for you or give me an opportunity to serve for you. So uh, this, uh, leader, uh, this leadership tactics has been used by many um, actors. Uh, many of them have failed till now. Um, we have seen a lot of people came and go and there are some still some aspiring candidates are there but the, but if you have to see the uh, evolve you cannot compare the society uh, this society 21st century society with that of a 1960s society in the 1960s or 70s uh, because the so uh, as i said the education level has grown, gone up now so um, uh, the education level is now gone up and uh, the people are literate the literacy rate is high. Uh, so, of course, the people are well informed through other means. The internet, the growth of internet has also envisaged people to learn more about the uh, common schemes or the, uh, or the uh, schemes undertaken in other parts of the world also, the growth story of many other parts of the world also. So, they are not ill-informed like those people in 1960s or 70s. Um, they are equipped with internet and they have a kind of access to all uh, resources where they can learn the growth uh, growth and development of other countries or uh, where we stand uh, India as a country where we are stand we stand now um, as a country so uh, these kind of informations uh, they have uh, this has hindered the uh, actors to pursue a career like MG Ramachandran who did it in the 70s but at the same time uh, if you see the fan circle of those actors uh, aspiring actors uh, they have a kind of less literacy rate than those people who are uh, uh, normally worked or who are in the middle class if you see the um, i mean it's a good topic to research uh, to have a phd research on this uh, uh, to see the um, uh, social social background and the uh, educational background of those fans uh, um, if you see that thing, if you analyze those things clearly, it will evolve that only the lower part of the society, only the poor people who are less educated come into the uh, fan circle who are like uh, promoting their actors' uh, um, motivation to become a political leader. So, uh, uh, like if you see the Western countries now, Sebastian Kurz uh, or whatever the leaders, uh, Finland, Finnish Prime Minister, uh, they, they become uh, a kind of uh, um, 
they are heading a country they are uh, taken they have taken responsibility to lead a country in such an young age but uh, uh, in tamil nadu or in some other parts uh, our youngsters have been like uh, um, they are working for a kind of uh, um, propagating the motivation of the particular actor or an aspiring actor so uh, so you, you see the a clear um, motivation of the youngsters who are following these actors or the actors who are using those forces to fulfill their uh, political dreams right uh, thank you thanks a lot for that uh, um, intensive uh, insight could you please elaborate where do you see india in next 50 years and uh, in achieving that uh, you know uh, objective for 50 years of your vision what kind of challenges you would also envisage during its way in the next 50 years where india is going to go through so that in in both parts yeah please yeah bala um, uh, i had a discussion recently with some um, uh, fellow student uh, not a fellow uh, a fellow colleague from another organization um, i just asked him see uh, why india is not getting investment like uh, uh, why china has managed to get more investment than uh, why germans are investing german companies are investing more in china than in india um, that guy um, i mean my, that colleague uh, told me see uh, democracy itself is a kind of hindrance for a country Uh, i mean you can on the one side you can see democracy as an advantage uh, um, which has uh, which strengthens the fundamental rights which guarantees the fundamental rights and protect the human rights of people but on the other side you have a lot of bureaucracy in that way uh, I, um, i mean uh, you have a kind of bureaucracy red tapeism uh, surrounded by the this democracy uh, that hinders um, um, because of your population it's very difficult to have a kind of mechanism uh, to streamline all those things so um, one of the main problem he cited is a corruption problem so um, this is the only um, one of the foremost reasons why india is not uh, one day it is lagging behind china in attracting uh, huge investments as china is a, uh, i said china is a dictatorship it's a kind of a, um, a dictatorship and it's very uh, it's I, as a as a company i would uh, think think twice to invest in that country but uh, he says no it's like a um, dictatorship works well because they are regulating those things and uh, regulating the problem of corruption and regulating the red tape red tapeism so that things move forward quickly and the and the people who are investing can start the business as early as possible so uh, uh, so th- he justifies uh, the dictatorship as a kind of a uh, uh, condition favor- favoring investments uh, um, which i always disagree because uh, a democracy is a strength and uh, a democracy is the uh, con- uh, is a kind of favorable environment where one can invest so uh, the main problem uh, what he cited was red tapeism and corruption mm. we have the system governance system which we had from, uh, which we had inherited from british rule so we haven't yeah we haven't take we haven't under, we haven't undertaken any reform in that administrative system if you see 1947 till 2020 uh, uh, we haven't uh, we haven't had any uh, reforms uh, administrative reforms in the government governance of indian uh, india so uh, that is that itself is a major hindrance i would say Uh, um, uh, successive governments have tried but it is very difficult to kind of uh, to uh, to uh, undertake this huge process um, which will ensure a kind of efficient governance but uh, it's very difficult uh, for the government to have a kind of a modern um, governance system which is completely digitized and uh, corruption of course um, um, the piling up of cases in courts uh, is a kind of a um, gross hindrance in the judicial system um, that hinders corruption cases not moving forward and stays there till for a long period yeah, there were cases where even uh, the uh, the person who was in who was in the corrupt who was charged with corruption um, retired and then he was taking retirement benefits also 
after 30 years his case was decided so uh, it, uh, there are uh, there are some administrative uh, laggings also behind that so um, what i would say is the challenge the foremost first and foremost challenge is our system reforms in the administrative systems and then the corruption when these both two combined together is a huge in, uh, hindrance uh, hindrance for our development or go growth if one can um, the uh, the civil services also the uh, uh, the union public service commission uh, so, um, public service commission it was also like the same as we had in 50 years uh, even the british power uh, the british colonial power they have evolved a new, they have introduced a new civil service system uh, but we are still using those uh, um, former colonial uh, british pattern of uh, uh, civil services so uh, that is a kind of a hindrance to the development but in other fields in education uh, the, uh, as i said the government has chosen 17 sustainable development goals and they are working on that area and um, especially in the in the fields of education improvement of uh, uh, infrastructure health sector and gender equality so these four more, uh, these four more. I'm looking forward uh, to see that uh, development in 2015 because uh, we are seeing, currently seeing uh, that, uh, witnessing those uh, um, uh, things like um, in the health sector or in the education sector. We are doing good job. So we are moving ahead in that areas so, and gender equality also. Um, we are doing, uh, we are making advancement. So uh, in these four sectors, uh, I would say India is moving. Uh, solidly and uh, there will be a kind of good growth in 2050 but uh, in other areas poverty eradication for example or uh, um, um, complete abolition of caste system or uh, whatever the systems or uh, um, uh, rural poverty i would say it's a very difficult task to go but um, for that we need to have a kind of a, a modern and efficient governance system and of course uh, um, eradicate uh, to, uh, uh, we need to eradicate the corruption in the system too right i think with this um, well said i think we all look forward to because i think india has become uh, let's say uh, a central negotiating partner in various issues across uh, the world it has become a very crucial partner as well, not only within the neighboring uh, regions, but also in many cases. And uh, whether it is the United Nations institution or it is World Health Organization or many things, India has taken very active and peacekeeping forces. Yes. India is the yes. largest Contrib contributor to the world. Yeah. So I think we are doing a lot, not only within, and uh, we are also building, uh, for example, democracy institutions like of us built by India. So I think a lot of things are we are doing in spite of all the challenges within a country which strives to move very, very forward with the modern ideas. But at the same time, um, I think Indian civilization as it's old it is, it has its modern thoughts even that time. It's all about how you see modern, how you use modern, the way, you know, people, uh, it's not about the way you dress or the way you think it. It's more about your thoughts and the process. And I think uh, when we look at the excavations that's happening in the archaeological department in India, I think a lot of new facts are coming about the thought process of the people very, very long ago, which the world doesn't know. So with that, I think that's an another um, topic for itself to think about. And it will yes, be, I think, very interesting for us to discuss about this one. Uh, but today, thanks a lot, Saravanan. And uh, thank, you, viewers, thank, that, you. thank you very much. And uh, we will publish this episode also very soon after the working on editing and everything and uh, nice weekend Saravanan. we will catch up thank you Bala. thank you very much for thank the you. opportunity